for the longest time, I did not like the Barambolo. I just, when I was a blue belt, everyone loved it, and so I had to be contradictory and not love it. Um, but I finally had like a breakthrough where it made sense to me, especially after being in wars with um, Thomas Stoll, one of the instructors here, and a few other people where the entire match is me trying to like lock them, and them trying to Barambolo me, and then just, we both kind of net out, right? Like acid and base, we just neutralize each other and then nothing happens. And then I had a, a realization when Lachlan taught his wedge bolo of like, oh wow, this is really similar to what I'm doing, just the complement. So I'm going to talk about this idea in Jiu Jitsu of moves either being complementary, meaning move A kind of fits together and can counter move B, but also move B counters move A in a loop. Or symmetrical, in which the same move counters the same move. The best example of that would be uh, in Judo, Osotogari. The counter for Sotogari is also the guard. Um, the Michael's class, the ninja rules and truck. The counter of the truck is the truck. It's symmetrical. The same move counters the same move. Whereas I'm talking about a complementary set of moves where in general um, it's kind of believed that leg locks are countered by barambolos. And I'm going to say not just barambolos but back takes because oftentimes when you try to leg lock someone you expose your back. But it also goes the other way, that when someone tries to take my back, usually they're going to bring vulnerability to their legs. So that's the concept of the entire class. And I'm going to show you a flow to experiment with and understand that concept. So there's my little spiel, and we're going to jump right in. So, have a seat for me, Natasha. The, um, the leg entry I'm going to go with first is just a really simple uh, back step. But I'm going to care about some small things. I want to step to the cross side leg, like so. And I'm gonna act like I'm bowling. So I'm gonna throw my hand underneath like I'm bowling, just like this. I don't wanna put weight into that far leg. I wanna leave my weight in the front leg, and my butt's gonna almost, as you can see, hit Natasha in the face. And I'm gonna kneel down, and I'm not gonna sit on my knee like this. I'm gonna bring my, put my knee into orbit around her thigh, and have it rise up through the middle, ending up vertical, just like this. So all I want you guys to do is just practice that entry. And the way I want you to practice is to not reset. Resetting wastes our time. I'm going to put my hand back on the floor, take my knee out like a technical stand-up, and then put it right back in. If you notice, I want to end up looking at Natasha. I don't, I, want to have my, I don't want to have my shoulders looking over here. I want to have my shoulders square with Natasha. All right? I have some analogies for that later if you guys struggle, but we're going to hope you guys can get this. So square in just like this, and I come back out. Just do this like five times, and your partner does five times. That's all we're going to do real fast. Then we're going to talk about the connection. Ready? We're going to clap on two, one, two. So, um, little things, the common, the kind of common errors. I'm gonna do it in the air, and I'll do it on Natasha. I don't quite. See. Oh, there she is. She's running over. So, um, common errors. Weight shifting is super important on this. Like, a lot of things that I'm gonna call errors, they're not errors because you can still make technique work. They're errors because it just makes technique a little bit less efficient. And I like rolling for a long time, so inefficiencies add up over time. So when I'm stepping in, if I put my bottom of my foot on the floor, it's gonna make my body wanna sit back this way. And then I'm gonna be further away from where I wanna be. By pointing my foot, I'm encouraging myself not to sit back because I'll break my own ankle. So your body doesn't wanna break itself. By being on the point of my toe, my body's gonna keep weight in this leg. Now, if you haven't been doing pistol squats forever, then this might be hard. So it's okay to put a hand on the floor. So the important thing is I, don't, I wanna kinda overshoot my target bend and then slide in and sit cross-legged. It's really important that I get all the way to here because the way, when I land, it's going to keep exposure on their foot. And this makes a really good solo drill. I can literally just sit here and do this all day. But well, we are going to move on to the next thing. So run smoothly, step across, overshoot, gather. I'm holding this leg a lot of times to keep the far leg here so I keep control of her hips. But that's it for that. Now we're gonna talk about the next piece of the flow we're gonna do, which is gonna be the barambolo, 
uh, or in particular the wedge Virambolo. So I'm not going to fold them together yet. We're just going to practice it from top side. So let's spin you around. Perfect. So imagine you're in side control. This is a contrived situation, but it's okay. Just because I want you guys to see this shape. I'm going to do it a few different angles so you can see. So the shape of leg locks for me is always that my shin touches a thigh. That means I have access to back step into a leg. The shape of the bolo is the opposite of that. So I want to have my right, the back of my right knee on the back of her left knee. <laughs> right? So it's, it's asymmetric. It's right on left. If I did left on left, that would be symmetric. If I'm doing right on left. But to me, that's not even the important part. The important part is my other leg. I want my left hip and thigh to go across her belt line. Don't worry, I'll do it a few times in different angles so you can see. Not so much my knee. You can do this with your knee or other things, but I find it's just harder. You shouldn't have to, the important two things. One, if you can only do this quickly, chances are you don't get it. If you only can do this quickly, now mind you, this is against someone who's not resisting. When someone's resisting, obviously you're not gonna be like, guess what, I'm gonna bear and bolo you. No, it's, you have to be faster than, but if she's not resisting and I can't go slow, I'm doing it wrong. Next, crossing your ankles almost always is useless. It just makes you feel good. You're like, I crossed my ankles. No, it just makes you feel good. It doesn't actually help. Um, triangles and stuff like that, I think are better for truck rolls and stuff, but right now like I said we're not doing the truck or the ninja roll. Michael Courier's class will teach you that later today, and it's awesome, but that's not what we're doing today. Thighs across the waist, and watch. I'm not gonna be rolling over here. I'm gonna drop my hip in, so really important. If you remember nothing about this class, remember, look at butts, not faces. <laughs> if you look at their face, everything goes wrong. Just look at the butt, everything will be all right. All right, it's okay to reach back for the shoulder, but we're not gonna look at it. So I drop my hip down, and that's gonna let them know the arm position, whether it's here or here, not super important. If it's here, there ends up being a weird free shoulder lock. If it's here, there's not. Leave it over here for now for the sake of making the move easy to learn. I drop the hip, I reach back for that shoulder. Front or back, it's up to you. I like the bottom one, but it doesn't matter. But I have to make sure that I'm looking towards the butt. Then from right here, you're gonna wanna extend. Don't keep your thigh in the hip. And as we come over, I turn my body next to her. This left leg is gonna stay bent. It's gonna make a little speed bump right here on the floor. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this leg like a rev to make her rise and her body will spin. You should be able to sit right here. I'm gonna put her back and just <coughs> using your leg, make them rise up. This is to me like the key to the whole technique. It's understanding this shape. Bent leg right here is a speed bump. Straight leg right here is the lever. You're gonna be tempted to do this. And like, ooh, I have a hook and try and put your hook in for the back early. Patience. Straighten your leg, watch them rise. Now the back is exposed and I can decide if I wanna, what kind of back take I wanna finish with or what I'm doing. But I just want you to get this part. I'm gonna drop her down, like so. Then I wanna finish taking your back, grab the hip, jump out, and there's a back take. We'll do it again. This time a little bit more fluid. Oh yeah, let's go to 90 degrees, but again, sorry. Swing over, legs over, thighs up, reach in, dropping down, coming through your bent, and extend. Just like that. Like I said, sit here and try. If I were to do this and extend both my legs, Natasha's gonna kind of start to be here and rise up, and this is exactly what I want. It's not bad, I can still try and salvage this, but if you look at where Natasha is, she has my leg, because they're complementary. All she would have to do is go ahead and do it. Rise up, sit in. Now she has my leg. Right? And so it's always connected. So if you want to be kind of uh, ahead of the game, you can try that, because then I could continue and simply rise up, make the shape. So I'm going to take my thigh right there, and I'm right back where I started. And now we have an infinite loop. Again, which way do I look? You look at the butt. Grab, drop, keep it bent. 
for the floor, and I extend. Tasha will rise up, step in, drop her leg right in. Now you see we're kind of moving, so look at your neighbors around you, don't crash into them. But this is the idea. Right now, I'm not doing a proper leg lock escape because that's not the point right now. The point is to see this relationship. So Natasha's not going to fight me. I'm just going to sit up. I have to get past her knee and make that shape. So if I was really doing it, I could kind of slide out for a second, but I'm just getting my thigh to her waist. I get my thigh to her waist, and I have my knee on her leg. This is our relationship. Okay? Trust me when I say keep it in your head. So I have the back of the right knee here on the back of her left leg. Reaching back, dropping, getting my two shoulders to the mat and flat. All right, I'm gonna keep the left one bent. I'm gonna entirely straighten the right one. All right, this is our flow. Any questions? All right, you guys are all perfect, beautiful, ready? <laughs> one, two. So, I did the thing that I always do, which is I say I'm gonna teach one thing, and then I accidentally teach two things, and I confuse everyone. So I'm gonna fix this for you guys. Then Sasha, go ahead into our legs. So I didn't exactly teach you two transitions, and that's really important. So from right here, if you're confused about what to do, Natasha's attacking my left leg, all right, which is my free leg is my right leg. So the arm of your free leg is going to marry Natasha's neck. So the inside of your elbow. So I'm gonna put my hand of the track leg on the floor. Just hip high stop and give Natasha a hug and get to side control. Now there's an important detail. Do you see how her knee is outside? I must cover her knee with my hip to get to my position. So right now I'm like this, I'm gonna cover her knee and then look at her butt. And now I'm in the starting position for the bowl. So next I'm gonna have Natasha do that step so that I can show the leg lock entry. So I'm gonna enter Natasha's legs. She's gonna bring her hand to my neck, come on top. She's gonna cover my knee with her hip. And she's gonna be right here to the top. Good. She's gonna go ahead and bowl on me. As I'm coming over, I'm gonna let her land here. If she finishes the back kick, go ahead and sit and stand up. It's fine. All I'm gonna do is take this off and sit back to this position. If she didn't finish the back take, right, then all I would be doing is be sitting right here and I would just rise up. Now I'm straddling a leg. This is the important moment. I have a leg between my legs, which means I can leg lock it. My right hand's on the floor, my left foot's here. I'm just gonna turn around. So I face and I'm right back where we were for the first part. So if this is confusing to you, watch me do it slowly a few times and just shut the heck up so you can just look up what I'm doing. That should help. If you're still like brain exploding, just raise your hand, I'll come help. <laughs> All right, one, two. All right, a little bit more time on that one. So really important thing, the escape from saddle is not like the best escape from saddle. The reason I'm doing such a, uh, a small and simple thing is that the purpose of this flow is to find a way that we can practice our leg entries and our back takes smoothly with a partner. And then you're gonna see this exact same situation come up because this class was based upon literally things that happen when I'm rolling. This exact sequence of events happens all the time. Not precisely like this, but really similar. So now what we're gonna do is make it slightly more complicated and really focus in on the detail. It's about angles. Sit down for me, Tasha. So, anytime I'm doing this, I really want to make sure that I'm making a hip angle that is useful to me. So, I'm going to go back to the side control position again. 
I see a lot of you guys still kind of trying to just like send it, so to speak, right? You're coming here and you're like, got this. And you come through and you just go, Ugh! and then it doesn't quite happen. <laughs> so, like I said before, going fast is not the answer. Going fast can be the answer when you're rolling if you're doing it right. So like, speed's only useful if it's directed in a sensical manner. So the reason why I'm showing you this way, I'm not saying this is the only way to bolo. It's not. I kind of, I'm starting to see bolos kind of like single legs. There's not one way to finish a single leg. There's dozens and dozens of ways to finish single legs. But I'm noticing that this particular wedge configuration allows me power slowly. And a really good question was asked, why am I fully extending my leg versus keeping it bent? Because I like pinning people. And so, from right here, I'm just gonna step in. If I leave my hip far from the, the further my hip is from her hip, the more space will be created when I roll. So I don't wanna be rolling away from her. I wanna be rolling next to her. So as I come in right here and turn, I'm placing our bodies in a parallel position, keeping my hip as close to her hip as I can. So from right here, I have to make sure that I don't just leave my leg hanging out here. I'm gonna be bending and extending, but I'm not extending over here, I'm extending with my leg perpendicular to hers, which makes her begin to rise as I extend. If I was actually doing the move to take her back, I would be hunting her upper body right here as best I can. If you like <laughs> twistering people, because twisting people is fun, you just grab their wrists and you're halfway to a twister already. Not because twisters are useful, but because they're mildly embarrassing to your partner. <laughs> <laughs> and in certain, in certain planet gyms, they have to buy you a burrito afterwards. Which is awesome. So, but all I want you guys to do, actually, real quick drill, just for like five minutes, get with your partner. And we're going to literally just do this contrived drill, where you lay next to your partner, hold their foot, bend your knee, put your leg in this configuration, and move up. And all you should be able to do just from right here is make your partner spin up. <laughs> all right? And it's not that I'm bigger than Natasha. Natasha can do it to me. So go ahead, pick my foot up. She puts her thigh, her thigh right here, bend your foot. Push my leg forward. And all she's gonna do is keep this foot on the floor, make her hip angle into mine, and straighten her leg. And I rise up. Just feel this motion. And she can do it again. She should be able to toss me over and over again with that motion. The same way that I should, if I flip it around, make that happen with her. But play with it. If I put my foot over here and try and do this, I'm just going to mangle her knee. The closer our, my hip crease is to her hip crease, the better this works. And the more that I put this on the floor, if I leave this in the air, I can still do it. <coughs> but it's better if I get my hand to the floor and see my knee pointing this way? When I point my knee to the ceiling, everything gets better. Watch, if I open my knee like this, this is weaker. When I close my knee like this, this is stronger. Real, really fast, I'm gonna only give you guys like five minutes for this. Feel this, because like this is the thing that allowed me to like have this stuff make sense. Before this, I was just like, ah, I didn't like it. But this, this makes it all structurally make sense. I don't have to hold the gi, I don't have to, it, it works, it's mechanics. Have fun. One, two. No crossing ankles. Okay, as I tend to do my glove trotters classes, the first 45 minutes are meant for all of you to understand and get. Now I'm gonna start going a little faster and if you get lost, it's okay, just practice the old stuff. All right? Because it has to be something for people who are more advanced, but then again, there's dozens of people here who can't better at the Baron Bolo than me, but it's not, it's not about doing super advanced stuff, it's about the way they all interlock. So what we're gonna talk about now is the exact same thing we did to get out of those leg locks, but we're gonna do escapes that I would actually do in a match. Because this escape I did before is really good for drilling, and, but if they have your healer, you're, you're probably gonna get healed. I don't wanna just hug them, it might not work. So Natasha's gonna go ahead and enter my legs. So what I love about this is just finding the shape. I don't have to escape a certain way. I could escape either rotating about my spine, right? So if Natasha's going for my heel, over here, go ahead. One like early stage escape I can do is just putting my foot on the floor and I'm hiding my heel. 
Just by lifting up and putting weight on my foot, I can buy myself a bit of time. Will she eventually expose my heel? Yes, she's, she's gonna still break me eventually, but this buys me time. I'm gonna take a C cup on her knee and slide my hips out like this. And my main goal from right here is to rise up to a knee. All right, so I'm gonna rise up to a knee and then I'm gonna back step around and I've made the shape. And now I'm ready to go. And for the sake of the drill, Natasha's gonna rise up and turn my leg again. All right, so now the other way to do it, for those of, mind you, I don't have time to teach you guys all the things about inversions. I've taught like a whole hour on that. But if you could already do a Granby roll, right? All I'm gonna do is C cup, slide out. Actually, no, I'm gonna do that first one again because I just did one time. So I hide my heel, put weight through it real fast, C cup, slide my hips. So notice I'm not running away, I'm pivoting about my spine to right here. And then I'm trying to rise up just to give myself enough space. If she's exposed my heel, I'm not doing this. I already have to be hand fighting and escaping, but she doesn't have my heel. My heel's, my heel's hiding. I place my hands on the floor and I'm looping thigh to thigh. Dropping into that hip crease, reaching back. I'm ready to take her back. I was actually going for her back. I'd obviously be climbing up. I've been, been having you guys lay down like this. This is simply for the drill. I was actually going for it. I'm going to hunt this far armpit for diagonal control or hunt this wrist for twister control. I'm not going to just lay over here and let her leg lock me. I'm doing that for the sake of the flow. If in the case of Natasha, come back. It's her job to stop me from getting her back, to pendulum her leg down hard so she rises up and is away from me before I can take her back. In a real match, that's how it goes. And then she injures my leg again. So that's option one, rotating about my spine. Option two is going to be a, I guess, a, kind of a, a lazy Granby, which is kind of, actually, we did it before. Option two is what I did before, right, where we just kind of rise up. You can also get away with it by putting your hands on the floor and walking over. So I'm not going to do that one again. You guys already got that one. Now this is the fancy one for all of you Granby Baron Bowlers. I slide out just slightly to get by myself some time. I'm going to reach underneath my own thigh and I can grab her own shin. Yeah. Oh, good point. Let's spin, spin, spin. I don't think I can. So I'm gonna come through here. I think we just hit the camera, we'll do it again. I go underneath, I wanna make sure once again, I'm looking at her butt and I get to right. But I don't think you guys can see any of that, so we're gonna do it again. So go ahead, I'm gonna roll and she's gonna take my leg. Do it again, take my leg. So this time the camera can see it. Cool. So from right here, I'm gonna reach through, my knee's in danger. I slide back for a moment. Drop down, I'm looking in her head. That's a great thing, if you can see their face, you're probably doing it wrong. So this is wrong. I go to my second position, and I come all the way through. Ah, I'm looking at her butt, things must be correct. And now I'm in business. So if you don't already know how to do this, I don't have time to teach you that right now. <laughs> um, grab me an open mat, schedule a private lesson, do what you do. Go on YouTube. Like inversions 101, I have a whole hour of Globetrotter video on that. But um, if you already know how to do that, then do it. But this is not the time to learn how to do that. Don't do it. <laughs> Stick with one of the other ones. All right, so those are your three choices. Play with them and the flow continues. Questions? Beautiful, have fun. One, two. All right, these are probably some really, really good questions. So as always, I made a mistake or two, or I just didn't emphasize certain things. On the, um, the full Granby version of the Barambolo, I didn't emphasize that I need to grab the hip. I was too busy telling you to look at people's butts, which I do think is important. But um, go ahead, enter the leg. So when I'm doing the full Granby variation, I'm telling you to back your knee out so you don't get broken. It's not actually a requirement. There are some truly crazy and, or brave people who will like go ahead and grab my heel. Like we'll do this from a fully locked heel hook because they're just that crazy and confident that, that, that their bolo is going to relieve the pressure and they're going to be fine. Um, and I've seen them usually be right. I, I just don't have that courage yet. I would personally in this situation be hand fighting, trying to stop the heel exposure before I dive in. But this is what I didn't emphasize. This arm should be grabbing that far hip. And once I get my head all the way through, then I'm entering. 
But important detail from right here, if I'm lazy, Natasha, go ahead and grab my leg. Yes, sir. Uh, the one inside this one. Natasha could still come back and knee bar me and do all kinds of things. So I'm talking about saddle this whole class, but um, any, any leg lock, knee bars are allowed. When I'm in this configuration, we're both kind of vulnerable. She can go ahead and leg lock me, but if she gets lazy, I'm just one hip heist away from being back in a bolo. All right. So at the very end, all I'm going to show is the idea that you can pretty much enter this from virtually any leg lock. We're not going to have time to go over every single one of them, but um, I'm just going to show a couple. So if Natasha puts me in an outside heel hook, just like a regular, whether she's reaping or not, just a regular outside heel hook. All right. So let's just go ahead and toss her here for the sake of it. Um, what's his name? Hunter Colvin uh, is probably, in my, in my opinion, one of the best at this escape. He does it from, from single ash, he does it all the time. The second someone exposes his heel, he immediately heists up, tosses this over, and this literally jumps straight into that position. He's like magic. Like I recommend like, oh, cool. put his Instagram up, like YouTube. He's, he's my favorite person to watch this escape on. It works from outside heel looks. That very same thing I just did works on the inside heel look. It's just before it gets fully exposed, here we are, same position again, hands to the floor. And I'm diving for those legs one more time. If that's the case, um, actually, who's someone who does a really good Imanari? Do you want to uh, I can Who? I can. Oh, perfect. Yes, no, if yes, I know you can. <laughs> uh, perfect. So, no, give me a slow Imanari. Don't, don't blow me up. So, as this is here, freeze. If he hasn't already knocked me down, I'm always just like one drop away. <laughs> from dropping into these. Anytime someone goes for your leg, it's just always there. Always there. So just kind of tinker with this, obviously with a partner who's not gonna break you off, right? If you're like, I'm thinking, then this is not the partner for this. <laughs> so play with it, explore, and we're gonna finish with, thank you so much, where's Natasha? Right here. Come on back. Is, here's a flow that I probably should've showed you 15 minutes ago, but I showed you other things. This is what I was trying to teach you in class. So. It's going to add a guard passing option for the leg locker. This allows both people to do both bolo and leg locks. So I enter the legs right here. I'm going to sit up, knee slice through, drop this knee, rise this knee up, grab, put it in, roll through. Natasha's going to rise up, enter my leg. Then she's going to guard pass me, switch her knees, pull my leg across, and bolo me. So now we have an infinite loop where we both get to practice everything. She drops me in my hip, I hip pummel over, slide in, and I'm always ready. So we both have a nice slow to practice everything from this class over and over again with no need to switch. All right, and class is over, so you can just take that home and think about it. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and take a photo and I hope you guys enjoy class. If any questions, please, Grab me an open mat, send me a message. I like people, all right? <laughs> and everyone say thanks to Natasha for being an UK as well. Woo!